plasma membrane. And what kind of membrane is this? We described it as being semi-permeable. Yeah, remember? So this guy can selectively let certain things in and certain things out. So that's pretty key. All right, does anyone want to volunteer to talk about the mitochondria? All oh, right, Lily, yeah, maybe. They make ATP. Yes, very good. Uh, so your mitochondria is pretty straightforward. Breaks down glucose, makes ATP. What is ATP? <laughs> A lot of answers, but I, I, heard, I heard the right one in there. It is your energy currency in the cell. Okay, so you know, rather than having sort of all these different types of chemical bonds to mess around with to get energy from, your body uses ATP. And it just sort of floats around, it's freely available, and enzymes need it to carry out their function. Um, so mitochondria are all over the place. You know, you, you're going to have hundreds to thousands of them, depending on what type of cell you're looking at. Um, so just how much ATP you need. Yeah. Does it also store the ATP for like, um, later use? For the yeah, cell? yeah. So you'll see there will be ATP kind of sitting in the mitochondria um, for use if, it, if you have like a really intense period. Um, but actually what cells tend to do is store the glucose um, and then sort of use that uh, just to churn out the ATP. All right, so who wants to take a stab at the ribosome? Andrew? But they synthesize the protein? Yeah, that's it. So your ribosomes are, there's a couple of them um, we'll talk about, but they're sort of floating around or they're actually attached to um, this other structure. And so, this is where proteins get made, all right? So um, you're going to have RNA coming out of the cell, mRNA. And you know your mRNA then goes over to the ribosome and gets translated to an amino acid sequence that is a protein, right? So that's where it happens, is on the ribosome. And anyone know what an endoplasmic reticulum does? Yeah? I think it's uh, yeah, a prepare the, uh, the, the ribosomes or energy that has to transfer. It's like a packing it. That's almost it. So there's another thing called the Golgi apparatus. It's more of the packaging oh, this one then plant. So. <laughs> The endoplasmic reticulum, I didn't expect any of you to know. It's, it's a weird phrase and you know, you've never heard it before probably. But this guy is right on the outside of the nucleus. And it's kind of this like weird, it's made up of these vesicles um, and plasma membrane. And it basically is studded with ribosomes. Most of it is. And this is where proteins get made and also get packaged. Um, so it does have some function of packaging. Uh, but you'll see that this is where proteins sort of, you know, they become translated from the mRNA. And often they get you know, sort of put into distinct little vesicles that then butt off and go to certain places in the cell. Well, we'll talk about this, but I just want sort of you guys to sort of think about this process here as we go through what everything does. Yeah. Is that um, there's the endoplasmic ATP to make these proteins or to package and Yeah. These proteins? So realize here anything that's like movement or making or sticking things together is all ATP uh, derived. Need ATP for anything like this to occur. But sort of nothing happens in the cell you know, without ATP to fuel it, essentially. So it's sort of ubiquitous in all the cells because you need that energy. How do they use it? Like, 
Uh, let me, I'll show you. There's, there's, it's easier to see it when I have kind of a uh, diagram to show. All right, so I didn't mention a couple of these, but I want you to think about this kind of as a nice little metaphor of, you know, like some industrial plant or something. And it's an easy way sometimes for people to think about it um, as you got your cell membrane, this is sort of the gatekeeper, you know, things go in that you need to sort of turn into your product, and then you get your product out. Uh, your nucleus, this is your computer, this is where things sort of get figured out, and then the information gets sort of sent out to be made into protein. So the mitochondria, of course, you need power, you got to make ATP, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, this is really for the construction team with the ribosomes to make the proteins. Now, the one we didn't touch on, but the one that you were uh, getting at was the Golgi apparatus. And this is sort of the packaging plant. Okay, so this is where you take proteins that have similar functions or need to go to the same area of the cell, and you package them together and then they get moved together to go somewhere. Okay, so let's kind of go through this uh, a little bit more. So your plasma membrane, remember you have a phospholipid bilayer, right? So these are those little guys that have the hydrophobic edge and the hydrophilic edge. And we talked a bit about this, uh, but this is a pretty complex place because there's a lot going on for the cell in the plasma membrane, right? It's obviously protecting the cell, it's distinguishing it from other cells, um, but you're transporting a ton of stuff sort of in and out of the cell. Uh, this is also how cells talk to each other. You know, you've got sort of little identifying sticky fingers um, that stick out, and other cells can see that and then understand what that cell's function is. Um, so communication happens quite a bit with this as well. And adhesion, you'll see that this is how cells stick together, is through their plasma membranes. So a lot of your muscle cells basically are attached to each other at the plasma membrane in very specific ways. So then when one pulls, sort of they all pull together. Okay, because you kind of you need this for the tissue to function properly. <coughs> Yeah. So is that why when you pull a muscle, it's like the whole muscle hurt instead of just that one part? <laughs> Could be, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, I, I can see that. All right, so um, you move things along the plasma membrane. Remember, we, we talked about this before. Um, there's a few different ways you can actually do this, right? Um, diffusion happens for very small molecules. Oxygen is one that easily just diffuses across the plasma membrane. Um, and this is, you know, fairly straightforward. You know, you're using oxygen in the mitochondria. And so there's a simple concentration gradient where you have less oxygen inside the cell all the time. And so your red blood cells, you know, sort of spread oxygen around. And you're going to see the oxygen just simply diffuse along the gradient into the cell constantly. <laughs> um, and so then you get bigger things. You have things like glucose uh, that you need to get into the cell all the time. And these are going to be carried out by things called transporter proteins. All right? um, sometimes this is you know, sort of a like, gate thing. Other times it's a simple uh, tube that sort of can like, twist open or twist close. Um, and so, there's different ways you can get molecules in and out uh, by using these proteins. Another one that actually gets a lot of stuff all at once is endocytosis. Um, and so, this is where a piece of your plasma membrane actually like pinches off. And you'll see that a lot of your immune cells, this is how they sort of take care of bacteria. They'll go and they'll sort of endocytose a bacterium and then just you know, send all these nasty enzymes in and destroy it. Um, so 
sort of a nice, easy way to get big things or a bunch of things all at once. All right. So 